The CBS News New York Times poll out this morning shows 53% of Americans believe global warming is caused by human activity. 31% think natural patterns are mostly the biggest factor. American experts are working in some of the world's most dangerous places to learn the impact firsthand. This morning, Mark Phillips begins The Climate Diaries, a series of reports showing how people are responding to the challenge. He's back in London. Mark, good morning. Good morning. Well, world leaders may be negotiating what to do about climate change in Paris, but some of the most important research on the subject is being done about as far away from civilization as you can get. This is Svalbard, a collection of Norwegian islands just 800 miles from the North Pole. And it's where a young American climate scientist has come to try to unlock some of the secrets nice of climate change that have been frozen into this landscape for tens of thousands of years. Sarah Strand, a 22-year-old Californian, won't see the sun again until mid-February. The polar night has set in, and darkness isn't the only thing to worry about up here. So I will take the flare gun if you want to take the rifle. Okay. This is polar bear country, where Sarah and her German colleague Norbert Perk are required by law to pack protection. The bears are more of a threat in summer, when the meltback of their sea ice hunting ground has made them more desperate for food, even to the point of attacking a research boat. But they are still a threat in winter, and it's in winter that this research must be done. This is basically your baby up here, is that right? <laughs> yeah, it has, definitely has to be running if uh, we're going to get all the data. Otherwise, all this suffering is for nothing. <laughs> Every day, Sarah comes out here to check instruments that are measuring a worrying trend, the release of greenhouse gases, which scientists used to think were safely locked into the frozen ground. The main thing we're looking at is the gas exchange with the ground, carbon dioxide, and methane. But then we're comparing that to other parameters that we're measuring here. What, like, like temperature? Stove, like yes, snow, exactly. What is the weather, basically? Yeah. Okay. And the more those greenhouse gases are released, even from frozen places like this, the more warming there will be. There are concerns of that, yes. Especially with the a, with a permafrost thawing, that there is now old carbon that is become, uh, becoming available again to possibly be released into the atmosphere. We're trying to shine some light on this. In the dark. In the dark. <laughs> Sarah has been here a year and a half, working in these conditions because the Arctic is, ironically and worryingly, where the Earth appears to be warming most. They call it Arctic amplification. It's hard to tell on a day like this, but the Arctic is warming sooner, faster, and more than anywhere else. Why that's happening and what it means for the rest of us is why this little speck in the Arctic has become the major center of climate research. You can't just measure one thing and say, oh, I found climate change. But it's more about having all these monitoring projects and understanding how the system is working. Another American, Hannah Miller, a 21-year-old from Vermont, is here too. She didn't come for the skiing. She came to study how glaciers are shrinking, their meltwater contributing to sea level rise. Climate change decisions, she says, have to be based on science. The frustration comes in when uh, climate change deniers use any of the uncertainties to say that your argument is false because you, um, you can have uncertainties and still have solid um, argument. Hannah and Sarah have joined a small, dedicated, and brave community in Svalbard. It's cutting-edge science up there on the edge of the world. Nora? Wow. 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 Fascinating indeed, yeah. Mark. Such an yeah. important conversation to have. I like what she just said. Yeah. Said you can have uncertainties and still have a solid argument. Mm -hmm. It's good that people are paying attention to this. Yeah. And, and we it just shows you where in so many pockets of the world, people are doing really interesting scientific yeah. work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that the largest gathering of world leaders on this issue yes. in Paris less than two weeks after those attacks, trying to forge some sort of compromise yeah. and deal to yeah. move forward, to, to yeah. in their words, save the world. Dealing with important problems and not being scared because... It comes two weeks after a terror attack. Indeed. Thanks again, Mark Phillips. And Mark will have more from Norway on tonight's CBS Evening News. He's reporting on the effects and responses to climate change in his series. It's called The Climate Diaries.